Hey there everyone, thank you so much for being here, thank you so much for watching. Starting with Synology DSM version 7.2, the Docker package has been rebranded as Docker Co as Synology Container Manager and it has been given some new functionality. Now whether this change was good or bad, it's a very lively debate, but what I do like about this change is the ability to deploy containers using a standard Docker Compose configuration without needing to run scripts or to SSH into our device. What I will show you in this video is how to deploy Pi-hole container using Synology Container Manager and how to redeploy the container in case something happened to it or to your NES. Now, when you get the hang of it, it's very convenient, very fast, very snappy, and I do like that very much. So, let's go ahead and see how to deploy Pi-hole using Synology Container Manager. Join me. Alright guys, so we are at the computer and let's get things rolling. The first thing that I would like to show you is the Docker Compose file I am going to be deploying in this, uh, in this video. But the most important thing that you need to realize is that you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time and write code from scratch. If you just open your favorite search uh, provider and type, for example, Pi-hole Docker Compose, you will get several results and these results will most often give you some example or a getting started kind of compose configuration that you can of course customize and change as you see fit and some of them will even comment things in the uh, in the configuration to hint you as for what they are doing and if you need them or you can remove them so you don't need to reinvent the wheel I didn't also so let's go go over my docker compose file and see what we will be deploying with it first of all we are going to deploy a container that's named pi-hole the image will be pi-hole the latest version network mode it will be host meaning my pi-hole will share the IP address of my Synology device the time zone will be America Chicago my web password, meaning the login password, will be Pi password. Of course, I urge you to uh, choose some other more complex password. My web port will be 8088, if, although you can change it to whatever you see fit, 8080 or 8081, whatever you see fit. The volumes, much like in the old Docker package version, you need to create a folder on your Synology NAS under the Docker folder, create a folder that's named Pi-hole, and in this folder create two folders named dnsmask.b and Pi-hole. And in the Docker Compose file, what we are doing is we are, te we are telling the, uh, the deployment to mount the local folders on our Synology NAS to inside of the Docker image in the Pi-hole folder and in the DNS mask folder respectively. And the restart will be unless stopped, meaning that if I restart my Synology NAS, my Docker container will restart itself also unless I've manually stopped it. In this case, even if I restart the NAS afterwards, the Docker, the Docker uh, image, the Docker container, sorry, will not restart itself. All right, so now that we have our Docker Compose, let's say, code, what, we're, uh, what we'll be able to do is to open up Container Manager, go into Project, and create Project. Project name will be Pi-hole, the path to my let's say container or where configuration will be kept is in this folder right here. I'm going to create a Docker Compose file and I'm going to paste my file right in here. I'm going to click on next. I don't need any of this, so I'll click on next and start the project start the project story once created and click on done if we're lucky 
the project will now pull the PyHole image and apply my configuration. All right, looks like we're in luck. With exit code zero, that means everything went correctly. Let's go into containers and we can see that a PyHole container is, is indeed created. Now all we have to do is to open up a web browser and try to go into the IP address of that Synology NAS and colon with the port we have selected. In our case, it will be port 8081. All right, 8081. Oh, sorry, I forgot. We need to add slash admin. Don't forget that and our super secret password and we're in that's our docker instance right there now let's try to do some settings a change for example let's change from google dns to cloudflare let's try to add some more lists to our pie hole by the way there's a great site i can recommend for you to add lists from that's the site i will of course put the url or the link in the description of this video by the way i'm also going to put in my uh, docker compose file in the description of this video but let's try to grab some lists from this site i'll just copy link add lists try to paste let's grab some more I just want to add content or changes to my pie hole because I do want to demonstrate even a catastrophic loss of the pie hole instance and we'll, you'll see that when we'll, we'll restore it, it will be restored with everything. Go to dashboard, right now we only have 300 and some thousand uh, 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 lists or hosts, sorry, let's try to go and now update gravity to grab all the hosts from our new lists all right now i've added even some more lists so that th this number will grow a little bit all right so right now our pie hole container is ready to receive client queries but let's say something happened and for some reason our container was completely corrupted and we needed to start from scratch. Let's even delete it. All right, the container is completely gone. All I have to do is go into project and build the project once again. It will again take the configuration from my compose file and the configuration that it already has stored in the folders that we have created right here. And as you can see, the container was rebuilt. And if I'll go and log in to my container once again, sorry, I forgot to add the admin in the end. Again, with the same password. You can see that the number of, dom of domains on the add list is the same and the settings that we have changed were kept and everything we have just, uh, we are continuing exactly where we left off. But that's not everything. Let's say that not only that our container was corrupted or deleted, let's say we suffered some catastrophic loss and our Synology NAS was completely wiped and you were smart enough to back up your Docker folder right here and you somehow managed to restore it. So even if your container was deleted and even if your project was deleted, so it's almost like you're starting from scratch, but as long as you have the data right here in this folder, you can just click on create, project name will again be pyhole, the path will be again our pyhole folder, but now the container manager knows or it found 
an existing Docker Compose file. So we tell him, use an existing Docker Compose, that's great. And the data in the Docker Compose is, of course, as you can see, is intact. So let's click on next, next, and done. And again, you will see that once the building process is completed, now we'll open up a new folder, a new tab, sorry, and go again into our PyOl instance. And now I remember to add the admin in the end. First of all, the PyOl is alive. And as you can see, the domains in the add list is the same and our settings are kept. We are exactly where we left off. Even if we suffered a catastrophic data loss, as long as we backed up and restored our Docker folders or shared folders on our Synology NAS, we will always continue exactly where we left off. So guys, this is how easy, at least for me, it's easy to deploy PyHole and, and every other Docker container this way. It gives us greater flexibility, but if you want to deploy containers, the, let's say the old fashioned way, you can always do that. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative and I will see you all on our next videos. Bye everyone. Take care.